Hi, David here from Critical Trading. Hope everyone's keeping well. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a few common mistakes when backtesting algorithmic trading strategies. Now, some of these mistakes can cost you a lot of time and frustration, and so it's important to think about these and show you how they can look like in the real world. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a couple of my codes of my existing strategies or some codes I've been working on recently and I'm going to point out what the mistake is and more importantly how should you avoid it going forward to save yourself a lot of time and frustration. Now before we get to the video if you've just come across my channel my name is David and I make high quality trading content specifically about algorithmic and systematic strategies. Now algorithmic or systematic strategies may sound quite daunting to some people, especially those with no programming background. But what I aim to do in my channel is to make it as easily understandable as possible, where I break it down into easily digestible pieces. So if that sounds good, please have a look at some of my other videos, some of my other playlists. And if that's something that you're looking for, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let's get right into it. The mistake number one I'd like to cover in this video is not including trading commissions when developing your strategies. Now, this is a very, very common mistake. And if you've been interested in trading for some time and uh, you know you read some, some blogs about different strategies or you watch some videos, you may have noticed that in some of these articles or, or sources, the commissions are uh, emitted. And that is a big mistake, especially when it comes to uh, systems that um, trade with a higher frequency. You really want to make sure that you include your trading commissions in order to make your backtest as realistic as possible. So let's have a look at one example. So what I have on my screen is an example chart with a strategy that I was um, playing around recently. This is a typical mean reversion strategy and it basically buys when the current day's close is below the previous day's low. So if I look at this particular candle here, we can see that it's uh, closing below the prior day's low. And at the same time, the close is below this line that I've got on my chart here. And this line is a bottom Bollinger Band. So this is a typical mean reversion strategy, nothing fancy at all. And basically what this strategy aims to do is to buy at close, so it would have been here and then it basically sells right at the next day's open. So in this case, it would have been the very next red bar here. So basically this strategy aims to exploit very, very quick, very short mean revertive movements in the stock market. So let's have a look at the results. Now, if we have a look at the equity curve of this simple system that I've just described on the previous screen, we can see that it looks very, very promising. Um, obviously, there's this big drawdown here, which is the beginning of 2020, which is when most of the mean reversion systems had a really bad drawdown, but they recovered very, very quickly. We can see that for the rest of the year, the equity curve has got a very, very nice steady direction up. So very promising system at first. However, when we look at the Bactus report, we can see one thing that stands out instantly and that is the fact that I've got zero transaction costs in the backtest. Now the problem with that is that because this is a mean reversion strategy its performance depends on quick sudden moves that are very very small and the reason I'm saying that is that if we look at the average profit and loss percentage the average profit and loss is 0.06% and that is a huge red flag right off the bat because when we add the transaction costs, they will most likely completely um, destroy the performance of this strategy. So let's have a look what happens when I include the commissions. And here we go. We can see as soon as I include the trading commissions in the backtest, the equity curve has got pretty much the opposite direction. So really what you want to do, you want to ensure that you include trading commissions in your backtests, especially when you are testing algorithmic trading strategies that hold their positions for very short amounts of time and their performance depends on short, small movements. You really want to make sure to include the commissions. Otherwise, there is really no point in testing them at all. 
Mistake number two when developing algorithmic trading strategies, specifically in the stock market, is not including the historical index constituents. Now, let's say that you want to build a strategy that trades all stocks in the S&P 500. You probably know that S&P 500, as the name suggests, uh, consists of 500 different stocks. Now, the problem with this is that these 500 stocks that belong to S&P 500 today are different to what they were 10 years ago or five years ago or three years ago. And the thing is, you need to take this into the account when developing your systems, especially if you're developing systems that um, hold their stocks or hold their positions for prolonged periods of time, uh, ranging from weeks to months. You really want to make sure that you take this into the account. Otherwise, if you don't, you will get some unrealistic results. They'll be basically uh, better than in reality. So let's have a look at an example. We're looking at two different reports belonging to the exact same trading strategy. This is a momentum trading strategy that trades stocks that belong to Nasdaq 100, which is a technological index. I actually shared this strategy with its full code and all the rules in my free course that you can sign up for completely for free. Have a look in the description of this video for the link. But basically, the difference between these two reports is that the report on the left, which is showing annual return of 26%, doesn't take historical index constituents into the account. The report on the right, on the other hand, which is showing 17.17% average annual return, takes the survivorship bias into the account. And that means that it takes historical index constituents into the account. So historical index constituents or, or the survivorship bias is actually a pretty simple thing. What it means is that there are different stocks that belong to Nasdaq 100 or S&P 500 and these stocks are not static so they change over time. But the thing is if you are working with the current index constituents um, as of today and you are backtesting a strategy or historical data but assuming that the index constituents remain the same you are going to get unrealistically uh, favorable results which is exactly the case of this report on the left 26 percent versus 17 percent is a big big difference especially when it comes to momentum strategies or trend following algorithmic strategies you really want to ensure that you take historical index constituents into the account because the differences can be quite significant. Mistake number three is what's called a future leak in your backtest. What that means in other words is basically using a piece of information in your backtest um, that would not be available at the time when the decision is made. So for example, you are using tomorrow's closing price in order to determine whether you should buy or sell a stock by using that closing price today. In other words, you are looking into future, hence the name future leak. And this is a very tricky one because even seasoned um, developers or seasoned uh, traders can sometimes have this kind of a logical error in their code, which is exactly what happened to me the other day. And this is the example of that. I'm going to show you another one of my codes where I had this error. This is a strategy in futures market. And this particular chart belongs to the E-mini um, Russell 2000 futures. This is an intraday breakout type of strategy. One of the key rules for this strategy is that it works with the rate of change of the particular instrument. The rate of change is uh, indicated here at the bottom of my screen, where the rate of change is negative if this um, this bar is uh, red and otherwise uh, it's it's uh, it's positive when the bar is green so let's have a look at the results this is the equity curve of the system that i just described on the previous screen and as soon as i saw this equity curve one thing that kind of stood out to me straight away was that the equity curve was just far too smooth to be realistic so i knew straight away that there is probably some sort of an error in the code that I'm not seeing. So as soon as I obviously uh, discovered that uh, the strategy was working with a future leak, I rerun the backtest and the equity then looks as follows. So this is clearly something that no one would like to trade. This test includes trading commissions, so it's realistic in that regard. However, this is 
clearly a strategy that shows no edge. So the problem is that the strategy works with the rate of change of the instrument or its return. Specifically, it works with 20 day return of the instrument. So for example, on this day, the strategy takes the 20 day return of the instrument and based on whether it's positive or negative, it either sells or buys. But the problem is that I had a logical error in the code and that resulted in the future leak. Specifically, that the strategy was looking at the return of the instrument ahead of the value being known to the strategy. At the close of this day, the return would be negative. However, a strategy opens its position during the day, so it wouldn't know that in advance. You really want to make sure that you know what you're doing when it comes to your backtesting software. You really need to take your time to understand how it works to prevent having errors like these in your code. That's it for today's video. I really hope that you took something valuable for your own trading out of it. If you like this video, please make sure to like it. Please make sure to also subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thanks very much. Signing out.